Hello and welcome to tcgplayer.com where today I, Craig Wesco, am going to play this tribal cat deck in Modern. So it's a deck that I built this week and it was after I was playing against someone online who played uh, this cat lord against me. It was in a mono white soul sisters shell and uh, it, it was pretty cool and like, you know, the deck was pretty neat, but this card really impressed me and they gave me some ideas and I was like wow this card I think actually has the chops for modern so I went through all of my favorite cats in modern uh, a few didn't make the cut like Leonin Arbiter a couple of other ones um, just because it didn't really synergize with uh, other directions the deck goes so there's various ways you can build it you could build like a an Arbiter hate bearer type thing or you can build a soul sisters type thing with the uh, Ajani's Pride Mate, that's what my opponent was doing. Uh, or you could do what I did and play the Wild Nacatl sort of aggro route. So I, I have Wild Nacatl, I have Step Links, and I have Loam Lion. So it's basically the the opening plays of a zoo deck, and or at least the old the uh, it, it calling it old school now is like I guess it kind of is now, but the the older builds of zoo how they used to to work. Uh, and then you have Path to Exile, which has the best removal spell in the format. So of course we play four of those. Everybody's playing Death Shadow, so there's no reason to play less than four. And we have four Casali Pride Mage, which is uh, one of the other best cats in the format. It's great against all the Ether Vials uh, that Merfolk are playing. Good against uh, Affinity, obviously. Um, just has a lot of utility, so I like playing Pride Mage. And it's a good follow-up. First turn to Coddle, second turn Pride Mage attack for four, because of the Exalted. Um, I have Honor of the Pure, because most of my creatures are white, and it's just a way to boost all my guys to uh, size them up better in matchups where I just want size. Uh, give the creatures a little bit uh, better protection, get some creatures out of bolt range, things like that. Um, and then Brimaz. Of course, everybody knows I love Brimaz. If you're following me on Twitter, as you should, um, that's where I post most of my magic content. It's at Brimaz for life. Um, so Brimaz is really sweet in this deck. Great cat. Works awesome with the Cat Lord. You play the Cat Lord. You attack with Brimaz. You may, he's a 4-5 Vigilance lifelink that makes a 2-2 lifelink that's attacking. And then if you have Honor of the Pure, it just goes ridiculously insane. So you just have like infinite lifelink enormous cats. It's like, I don't know what you're feeding these cats, but <laughs> they're going to kill you. And then Ajani, not technically a cat, but he's the cat planeswalker. I figured you can't build a tribal cat deck and not have Ajani in it. And since we're already playing Splashing Red for Wild Nacatl, uh, I figure Splash for the most powerful Ajani ever printed, um, the one that I think is, is the best one. Um, and it's a reasonable card right now, too. So... I had to fit a Johnny in there. And now that we have five copies of this five mana Cat Lord, and we have two copies of this four mana Cat Planeswalker, and then we have extra legendary three mana Cat Legends, Cat Soldiers, uh, we want a way to uh, pitch them for good effect. So if we, if we can't get the five mana yet, uh, let's Shining Shoal pitch something, redirect some damage, gives us reach by burning the opponent out, it protects our creatures, protects our life total, so a Johnny can gain us life, Shining Shoal can effectively gain us life. We have Path to Exile to efficiently deal with a, an attacking creature to prevent us from taking damage, and we have creatures that size up well in combat as blockers. 3-3 three, three for 1, 2-3 uh, for 1, and just you know 3-4 for 3, things like that. Um, and then the mana, we have a Gavany Township, because we make a lot of tokens, and we can, we can kind of go reasonably wide, um, so that's a good late game card. Mood of Alt, because it's technically a kitty. And we have Windbrisk Kites, that's the other special land. So Windbrisk Kites, it, this isn't an ideal deck to turn it on, because really, outside of Brimaz, um, we're not really making tokens early. We don't have Lingering Souls. We don't have Spectral Procession, stuff like that. But we do have a lot of cheap creatures. We have like 12 one-drops. We have 
another six two drops, and then we have Brimaz, which makes a token. So we do have, uh, you know, like we're not just bam activated on like turn four every time, but I think it is good enough to play because if we can hit like a regal caracal off it, like it's just lights out. Um, so it's just another cool card in the deck. And then we have 12 fetch lands, uh, mostly to support the step links and also because we're a three color deck. And then in the sideboard, let's uh, take a closer look at that. Uh, we have another shining shoal for matchups uh, like burn, anything that's uh, dealing us damage. And then it can sometimes come in against you know, various other things. It's good against anger of the gods because you pitch a card and you can go prevent one damage to this creature, one damage to this creature, and then like two damage to this other creature and deal all four of it to you know the opponent. So the anger of the gods just dealt four damage to the opponent's face and didn't actually kill any of our creatures, then we just attack them and kill them. Uh, rest in peace, because everybody's playing graveyard stuff right now. Uh, Dredge is a big deck. It just won, uh, or got second place in a tournament with Ben Friedman. Um, a lot of people are playing Delve. A lot of people are playing Snapcaster Mage, Tarmogoyf, just all kinds of... And then there's combo decks that rely on the graveyard. And since the graveyard doesn't affect us at all, I figure let's run the full force in the, in the sideboard. Stony Silence, great against uh, Affinity, Tron. Um, I guess not the Eldrazi Tron. Uh, it might be good enough to bring in uh, anyway, but it's mostly against, you know, combo decks as well. That, like the uh, Ensnaring Bridge combo deck, whatever it's called. The I always forget the name of that deck. I want to call it Ensnaring Bridge Prison, because that's what it is. Uh, but it's the, you guys know what I'm talking about. And then there's Leon and Relic Order, just another kind of disenchant. And Oblivion Ring is another removal spell that can also act as a disenchant. And the reason that I have these, I already have four Pride Mage mains, so it might be a little bit overkill. Uh, but I want Oblivion Ring against like uh, Reality Smasher type cards. And I want to have like Relic Order, Oblivion Ring, Pride Mage as answers to... Uh, the Garapar Ethergrid, because that's uh, Affinity's sideboard plan against Stony Silence. Um, so I want answers to that card, basically. So I want cards that can get rid of an artifact or an enchantment. And then I have uh, Lightning Bolt as just a cheap removal spell. A lot of matchups like Merfolk, uh, other Wild Nakatl decks, um, Affinity, uh, anything that just wants to play an early creature, sometimes Noble Hierarch decks. Just one mana, kill your creature, uh, or if we're racing, I can just bolt your face and basically kill you a turn before you expected to die. So it's just an efficient removal spell to have on the sideboard. Since our mana is good enough to support the red pretty efficiently, um, decided to, to play the Lightning Bolt instead of something like Sunlance. And then the last card, it's the one that looks even less like a kitty than... Uh, some of the other cards, even even less than Moodavald, I think. It's a kitty, though. It counts as a tribal cat, and it's pro-black. So pro-black is real good right now, because people are playing Death Shadow, which is black, and Gurmag Angler and Tassigur, both black. Removal spells like Culligan's Command, Fatal Push, Terminate, um, all black. So there's a lot of black cards and black creatures going around right now. Chameleon Colossus, I think, is well positioned. And since we're a tribal cat deck, and it's technically a cat, uh, let's get it in there. Um, I had to get a Johnny in the main deck because he's the cat planeswalker, but the Chameleon Colossus gets to uh, get sided in if we choose, since we're already going that route. So this is the uh, my tribal cat deck. Um, I'd say if you, if there were a graph, and on, on one dimension there was the, the power level of the deck, and on the other dimension it was the fun factor of the deck, this deck would be about a 9.5 uh, on the fun scale, uh, and maybe like a, a 7 on the power level scale. So if, if, if you're trying to find the tier 1 broke the format, you know, the deck that's best positioned against like a Death Shadow metagame, uh, I'm not advocating that this is that deck, but if you're looking for a deck that's just going to be more fun than any deck in the metagame, 
this might be that deck. Okay, so I'm still working on it. I'm still trying to make it, you know, tier one. Uh, I'm winning matches with it. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely, you know, holding its own so far. But uh, really, it's the fun factor that's the selling point of this deck. So uh, let's uh, let's play some matches with it and see how fun it is. Meow. <laughs> 